What's up, Nick fans? All right. I am Victor Hatchba from Nick Fans Brazil channel. Today, again, again, in this channel, a special guest, a special guest, Jake Fisher. Welcome, welcome again in this channel, bro. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for having me, Victor. What's going on? Ah, I am fine. I I really, really want to see Knicks in next season. I really, yeah. really want. <laughs> But Look, it's, I, it's, a, it's, it's a new year. Everyone gets excited at the new at the start of the season. Every team is zero and zero. Yes, I agree. Totally agree with you. Knicks fans base, do you know you know, you know. Uh, Knicks fans base pa uh, really passion, really passion, stronger passion with this team. So I invite you in this channel again because I want your opinion uh, about New York Knicks. First of all, Jake, first of all, uh, I want your opinion and your expectations about uh, two new, two new uh, players in New York Knicks. Jalen Brunson and Isaiah Hartenstein. What do, what do you think about this? So I'll start with Hartenstein first. I'm a big fan of his. He was someone who this time a year ago was still kind of searching to find an opportunity. And the Clippers had basically a training camp invite to him, from my understanding. And he ultimately played his way into the rotation and became one of the best backup centers in the entire NBA last year. The shooting is very good. He's a very legitimate passer. Um, and he had many suitors. I, I know that Hartenstein was, was considering um, an opportunity with the Orlando magic and free agency as well, but he chose the Knicks and I mean, he is a CAA client. Um, so I, I mean, I, I believe that to be correct. If, If I'm wrong, I apologize, um, but I believe he's a CDA client. So the connections between that agency and New York are obviously deep. Um, but I think he'll be a stable piece who's even capable of starting if Mitchell Robinson does sustain some injuries like he has in the past. And obviously with Jalen Brunson, New York has been without a true point guard for a long, long time. And to have someone like him who will be able to raise – the floor of everybody to table set to get into the half court and help create opportunities to score for shooters and for the next big men and for RJ Barrett. I think it's going to be a market improvement on the point guard position from a year ago. And uh, Jake, uh, do you, do you, uh, do you believe uh, Jalen Brunson uh, can help Uh, Julius Randle. Julius Randle can be better playing uh, with Jalen Brunson, in your opinion? I think he can get better. Um, just playing with someone who is that good at connecting people and at creating his own shot and creating opportunities for others should help altogether. It will be interesting to see their balance of the ball handling duties because I do think when – Uh, Julius became an all-star, a lot of that success was from ripping the ball off the rim on the defensive side of things and pushing in transition and him being a ball handler. And those opportunities will, in theory, be lesser now. But I think with every team that does end up stacking all-star caliber talent, there's always conversations about staggering players and lineups. You know, in Minnesota, for example, this year, you've got Anthony Edwards and D'Angelo Russell in the backcourt and Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert in the front court. So in theory, Minnesota should be able to have one guard and one big at all times on the court. In Philadelphia, the Sixers should be able to have James Harden or, or Joel Embiid on the court at all times. And at a guard level, they should be able to have at least one of James Harden or Tyrus Maxey on the court at all times. So maybe in New York, while Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle might not be the same level of dynamicism, the same level of talent. They are arguably the Knicks' two best players, right? And so yes. there's a potential overlap in ball handling responsibilities than in the moments where we see Jalen go to the bench or Julius go to the bench. 
I think that could, particularly when Jalen goes to the bench, I, I don't have any insight, like, assuredly that this is what they're going to do, but I could certainly see the Knicks um, trying to really prop up Julius in bench lineups when Jalen, when Jalen, excuse me, uh, is <laughs> no, catching no. some minutes on the sidelines. Uh, Jake, I am disappointed uh, with uh, Julius Randle, but uh, you mentioned in beginning this interview, it's a new season. Uh, uh, I just, uh, I just want uh, Julius Randle play better. Just it. it, it's great for the New York Knicks, for me and all uh, Knicks fans around the world. Just it. <laughs> And uh, Jake, uh, I want your opinion too about uh, what do you think about uh, RJ Barrett's extension? I think RJ is a very good player. I think he's shown the ability to play a lot, to play um, every single night, and to be effective on both sides of the floor. That's one thing that I've talked to many executives about this summer, about R.J. Barrett's contract, about Tyler Hero's contract, and about the deal that Jordan Poole is expected to sign, and that none of those three guys are perfect players. And of all those three guys, R.J. Barrett is really the only one who can hold his own weight on the defensive side of things. But he is obviously the furthest along on the offensive side of the ball. But I think you, you find the biggest R.J. Barrett supporters out there they will say that he's got the ability to develop and catch up in certain respects with three-point shooting, with attacking off the dribble, with creating his own shots. Um, so if he can continue to make strides this season and he does all of a sudden put himself into, I'm not going to say all-star consideration, but there are guys over the years who are always considered to be fringe all-stars, right? If he could be one yes. of those guys, that's going to be a big uptick and a big benefit and an improvement for New York. Ah, great. And uh, I want to talk with you, Jake, about uh, this subject. Uh, Nick fans base in this offseason talk so much about the, the question. Uh, what do you prefer uh, starter in New York Knicks? Uh, Quentin Grimes, né? Quentin Grimes, or Evan Fournier, in your opinion? Yeah, it's a big, it's a big tough, tough debate, and I know the fan base is certainly battling about it. If Quentin Grimes was someone who the Knicks value so much that they wouldn't put him in a deal for Donovan Mitchell, or they wouldn't put him and other pieces in the deal with Donovan Mitchell. Whatever the actual line in the sand was that New York drew in those trade talks, they clearly valued Quentin Grimes enough to the point where it might have derailed that deal getting completed. So if that's the case, I, if I was a member of the New York Knicks front office or coaching staff, I would want to start the year trying Quentin Grimes at the starting position. But at the same time, You do have Evan Fournier on the roster making $18 million. And it doesn't seem like the contract is very tradable at this point, right? It seems like the Knicks would, in all likelihood, have to attach draft capital, whether it be a first-round pick or a couple of second-rounders or what have you, to get off of Evan Fournier's deal. So if that's the case, and this is a business as much as it is a sport, why not put him on your, in your roster and put him in your rotation, and you're going to need shooting with this lineup. He, in theory, is the Knicks' best shooter. I think he set the franchise record for most threes in a season, right? So I do understand both sides of it. And look, at the end of the day, this is year three, and the expectations were set very high very early with that four seed and Tom Thibodeau's first year coaching on the sidelines. And you finally go out and get Jalen Brunson, There's going to be an expectation this team is competing for the play-in tournament. So Quentin Grimes isn't ready yet to be a starter, and Evan Fournier has still proven to be a capable starter. I can see that I can see the scales tipping towards Fournier at a certain point too. Oh yes, yes, sure, I agree. And uh, I ask it to you about Quentin Grimes because I won't ask it to you 
about younger players in New York Knicks. I want your opinion. Uh, do you believe in more minutes for Obi Taupin in next season? What's, do, uh, what's your opinion about Emmanuel Kikley, uh, Deuce McBride, younger players from the New York Knicks? Yeah, those are all guys that I think the Knicks need to start to figure out who they are and what they can be as professionals, not just for this season, but in the fact that a lot of those guys, you know, they're, they're definitely not rookies anymore, right? I mean, McBride's in his second year, um, but quickly and top, and soon enough, are, that they're going to be in the same situation that R.J. Barrett was in in terms of do you or do you not extend him uh, before his fourth season? So you want to have as much data that you can before making that decision, and you hope that these guys – I mean, part of why first-round picks are so valuable is because as this – league has gotten so expensive and salaries have gotten so high and the cap has gotten so competitive. Um, you need to have players on rookie deals like Jordan Poole in Golden State competing for a championship and winning a yes. championship and being one of Golden State's best players throughout that playoff run while only making uh, you know paltry sums by comparison to what Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins um, and e even veterans on mid-level deals made. So if that's the case, um, you know, you, you do in theory want to maximize those guys while they are making low salaries. Yes. And uh, what, uh, what's your expectations, Jake, with New York Knicks in next season? Uh, you know, uh, our conference, it's very stronger. It's mm -hmm. hard. It's hard, Jake. It's hard. Uh, I want your expectations your opinion about New York Knicks in uh, next season. Do you believe, for example, playing uh, playing uh, later playoffs? Do you believe playoffs or <laughs> or don't believe nothing or believe yeah. nothing about New York Knicks? Well, look, one of the Knicks' most staunch competitors, let's say, for one of those play-in spots is going to be or is expected to be the Charlotte Hornets. And so far, Lamella Ball has, a, has an ankle sprain, and he's potentially going to miss some time in the start of this regular season, which could start Charlotte already in a tough hole. They already don't have Miles Bridges while he, you know, is, is during, you know, impending legal activity um, in Los Angeles due to some off-court uh, domestic violence allegations and whatnot. So he's not going to be around. That's, a, that's another huge hit, obviously, to – um, to their ability to be successful. And Washington, you know, Christos Porzingis turned an ankle that same game against Lamella Ball. At a certain point, if the Wizards aren't good, do we start to hear the questions about a Bradley Beal trade request again? I, I don't know. So at that point, you know, two of those teams competing for that 10 or 9 spot, all of a sudden, you know, in those scenarios we're saying, all of a sudden they're dropping out and it's, creating a clear path for New York. So I do expect them to be in the thick of that 9-10 seed. I really do. I don't know if they'll be much better, to be honest. But I think after the season that Knicks fans endured last year, if you got into the playing tournament, if you even got the 9 seed and hosted an elimination game at Madison Square Garden, I feel like Knicks fans would get excited about that. Jake, uh, I, ju I just uh, know one thing. Uh, New York City and Nick fans around the world uh, deserve deserve a uh, uh, better team. Deserve, really deserve. Uh, it's complicated. In Brazil, I am tired, Jake. I am tired. So many jokes. So many jokes about my team, bro. Ah, yeah, I am tired. I am tired. <laughs> I hear you, uh, man. I hear you. <laughs> uh, it's complicated. It's complicated. But I believe, I believe in the future, two, three years, maybe this team will be a contender again. I, I hope. Really hope. <laughs> what sports, oh. are about. sports are just about hope. That's really what they're about. Yes. And uh, I remember, Jake, uh, in pandemic season, uh nobody nobody uh believe in Knicks uh coming to playoffs Knicks had uh in the season Alfred 
Peyton, Jake. Alfred Peyton. My eyes blood when I remember <laughs> this guy, PG and Knicks. Now, uh, New York Knicks, you mentioned, né? Uh, New York Knicks uh, has a solid point guard now. Uh, I, I, we, I, me, you, nobody knows uh, the future. I, ju I just hope a great season. And I, 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 I want Knicks surprise me, surprise me in the next season. Uh, Jake, uh, I want uh, you uh, to tell for us in Brazil... I want uh, you mention your book, bro. I want, I, I really, I will uh, put a link né, uh, from Amazon in mm. the description from this video. But you, I want you, you to tell for us about your book, bro. Yeah, I wrote a lot about tanking in the NBA, which is obviously a very important topic these days with Victor Wembanyama. Um, and there's a lot of stuff from the 2013 to 2016 window of the league with Philly and the Sam Hinkie process years and Orlando and Los, Los Angeles and Sacramento and Cleveland and Minnesota with Joel Embiid and Andrew Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns. And, um, you know, even there's a lot about there's a good bit about the Knicks trying to figure out how to draft Kristaps Porzingis in that 2015 draft. So. There's, there's a lot of Porzingis info for any Knicks fans who, who, who still hold on to that subject um, with a lot of passion. So um, it's on paper. It's out in paperback now. Uh, it came out last year, last May. People have really enjoyed it. So um, it would mean a lot if people kept buying it. Yes, I, I will. I will. But uh, this, this book, bro, uh, bro uh, now just in English Or, or have in another just in language. English. Just in English, yeah. No problem, bro. No problem. Oh, yeah. For example, your friend. Oh, There you Chris go. Harry. Hey, <laughs> Chris Harry. Just in English. But yeah. no yeah. problem. No problem, man. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, will, you, I will. It'll read. help your English. If I read a book in Portuguese, I would learn a lot more. Yes, yes. I agree. Totally agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> my English is not perfect. Yeah, yeah. It's better than my But... Portuguese, man. <laughs> But I will buy. I will buy. And I hope my audience, uh, people from Brazil, buy this book from Jake Fisher. I, uh, I really, really will appreciate. Uh, bro, uh, I won't uh, say thank you again, Jake. Thank you, man. Uh, I know you're very busy. Uh, I know, and uh, you you know too. I am a big fan from your job. Uh, you are you you are a great guy, great guy, and uh, I'm really happy, really happy uh, with uh, this interview with you, bro. Uh, really you. happy. Thank you, man. Great to join you, and I hope you have a, a fun time watching the Nexus here. Yo, share, share. And uh, I, I, I hope nah, you enjoy uh, uh, this interview with us. Of and uh, I hope, I hope see you again in this we'll channel. Make we'll make it happen for sure. <laughs> Thanks so much, bro. All right, buddy. See ya. See ya. Peace. Go Knicks. <laughs> queria comentar com vocês, né? Nós temos agora uma novidade aqui com relação ao Nick Fans Brasil, que o canal agora pode ter o programa de membros, né? No YouTube. Então eu gostaria de pedir para você, você que puder, se inscreva também, né? Seja membro, seja membro do Nick Fans Brasil. Apenas R$ 7,99 por mês. Apenas R$ 7,99. E você vai ter vantagens exclusivas, vantagens exclusivas por ser membro do canal Nick Fans Brasil. Uma delas, você vai ter grupo especial no WhatsApp, que você vai ter as notícias sempre antes, né? Vídeos e etc. sempre ditos antes para os membros. Uh, benefícios que vão ser estudados ao longo do tempo, que vão ser exclusivos para vocês. Além de sorteios, galera. Quem for membro vai ter essa vantagem, galera. Então, bora lá, participa e apoia o canal Nick Fans Brasil, pessoal. Beleza? E aí, pessoal, este foi mais um vídeo aqui no canal Nick Fans Brasil. 
Espero que vocês tenham gostado, né? E como é de praxe, pessoal, você, você mesmo que está assistindo pela primeira vez o canal Unifens Brasil, não se esqueça de se inscrever, se inscreva aqui no canal Unifens Brasil. Não esqueça, né, você que já é inscrito, de ativar o sininho para notificação de novos vídeos. E também sempre deixar o seu like, um comentário, compartilhar com os amigos, por que não? Para ajudar com que o canal Nick Fans Brasil chegue cada vez em mais e mais pessoas, pessoal. Beleza? Conto com a ajuda de vocês, Nick Fans. Um abraço! Are you down with the orange and the blue? I'm a Nick fan. Oh.